Hi, I'm Mickey Delmage of Shored Park, Alberta. Hear the latest information from the world of radio, locally and internationally, each week on the International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal and online at ckut.ca. Welcome, everybody, to the International Radio Report for Sunday, April the 21st, 2024, here on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. My name's Sheldon. Jill is with me as usual. We have 30 minutes of news and information for you from the world of radio, both locally and internationally. We're here every Sunday morning with uh, our program and have been since all the way back to 1987. So uh, we do thank you for checking us out. We're going to start off this week uh, with another reminder about the upcoming uh, 37th annual NASWA Winter SWL Festival. It is taking place on May the 10th and the 11th, and uh, registration is open. If you are planning on attending, it is an an event that is a hybrid event this year. Uh, There will be a Zoom element and an in-person activity going on in Pennsylvania. The town is Fort Washington, Pennsylvania, just north of Philadelphia. If you do want to attend in person, you do have to register for that. And also, if you want to participate in the Zoom event, uh, you should register for that also. Registration can be done uh, right on their website, swlfest, swlfest.com. Now, there are uh, rooms set aside for the uh, people wishing to stay over for the two-day event, May 10th and the 11th, at the uh, hotel which is the uh, Holiday Inn Express and Suites in Fort Washington, Pennsylvania. In-person registration for the event is limited to 65 participants. So the sooner you register, the uh, more of a chance you have of uh, making the list. And it's very important to note that they will not be processing in-person registrations at the event. So if you have not registered and you live close to the hotel and you just show up on uh, May the 10th or the 11th, they're not going to accept your registration at that point. So it's very, very important that you pre-register. So uh, once again, uh, swlfest.com is the place to register either for the in-person event or the Zoom event. You can go to that website and see a complete list of the forums and other events that will be taking place. If you have registered you will be receiving links to the zoom meetings and uh, they'll be coming out just a day or two before the actual event so if you've been looking for those uh, and wondering why you have not received those they will be coming but they will only be sent out to you a day or two before the actual event gets underway so uh, those are the words that we have from uh, Richard and John the two uh, organizers of the event so we look forward to seeing you there we'll be involved in it uh, running the uh, Canadian International DX Club uh, hospitality suite throughout the weekend, starting with an icebreaker event on the Thursday evening. So uh, anyone who's registered will receive information on that as well. So in our news today, we have closing in on 100 years, CKUA radio could go dark without cash infusion. This is by Michael Rodriguez, the Calgary Herald, and this is via Ricky Long. Just more than three years shy of its 100th anniversary, Alberta's only province-wide donor-funded community radio station is at risk of going dark, and it's turning to its listeners for help and sharing its future. CKUA Radio, one of Canada's oldest radio stations and its first public broadcaster, says the threat is not caused by a lack of success. The station has seen audience growth of more than 10% in the past five years and steady revenue from fundraising and advertising, bucking many industry trends. But CEO Mark Carnes says a perfect storm of inflationary pressures, trouble filling vacant office space at its main building, the historic Alberta Hotel in downtown Edmonton, and a lack of government support is taking its toll. There's no other way to say it. We must raise $3 million by September 30th, Kearns said in a video update released Wednesday afternoon. 
Without it, CKUA's cash reserves will be depleted and we will be forced to shut down after 96 years of serving Albertans and honorary Albertans like you. The station's annual Spring on the Air fundraising campaign starts Friday and will run for 10 days. And that time, Carnes says CKUA is hoping to raise the first $775,000 for its multi-million dollar target. We absolutely have to surpass that goal. We have to crush it, he said. The more we raise in those first 10 days, the better the momentum and the better the story to tell as we ask donors, community members, and the government to invest in our future. Following the 10-day campaign, CKUA will launch a long-term fundraising plan that Carnes hopes will lead the station into its second century of existence. CKUA started in 1927 and was originally based on the University of Alberta campus in Edmonton. Now it has two studios, one at Edmonton's Alberta Hotel and another in Calgary near the National Music Center and broadcasts province-wide and online 126 hours a week. The station has become known for supporting local musicians, playing tracks from more than 1,000 Alberta and 3,000 Canadian artists annually. Karn says CKUA was the first station in Canada to broadcast a football game the first to stream online, and the first to showcase Canadian icons such as Katie Lang, Jen Arden, and Corb Lund. CKUA isn't just a broadcasting investment. It's a heritage investment, says Carnes, noting the station's priceless historical record collection. As Canada's first public broadcaster, we are the blueprint for all public and community broadcasters across Canada. For hundreds of thousands of artists and listeners in communities across the country and around the world, CKUA is a big part of what it means to be Albertan. According to its 2022-23 community report, nearly 60% of CKUA's close to $6 million in total revenue for that fiscal year came from almost 11,000 donors. It was operating at a loss with nearly $7.4 million in expenditures. The station says government contributions, on the other hand, account for just 1.5% of CKUA's operating budget, despite offering a free nonprofit service for the public at large. Recent provincial and federal budgets also came and went with no indication of bolstering funding. Despite hundreds of millions of dollars in new money for our national public broadcaster and relief for privately owned media companies in their time of need, Alberta's broadcasting and cultural gem has been left out. And there's information on how to donate. It's available on CKUA's website at ckua.com. So this shows how difficult it is to be a community-type radio, a different broadcaster than all the big gun um, you know, commercial stations where all the money is going right now. So uh, hopefully they can manage to get that money. It would be so sad to lose something like that, especially so close to 100 years of broadcasting. Yeah, for um, a station that really sort of pioneered, as they said in the article, pioneered community broadcasting. Uh, So many stations have used CKUA as an example. The station started small and expanded uh, to become a province-wide network. But, you know, like everything, uh, it's more and more costly to operate things. And, you know, it's, it's time for listeners who appreciate what they're hearing to realize that radio is not free. It's run like a business, like anything else. There are expenses, there are, you know, maintenance to do. There's all sorts of overhead cost and uh, technical costs and what have you. It's not an easy thing to do and you have to maintain the, uh, the sources of income and it's becoming more and more of a challenge. So uh, yes, it's a lot of money that they're asking for, but when you look at our next story, It's basically a drop in the bucket compared to what we're going to tell you about now. If you've been listening to our show, you know that we've been following uh, what's been going on with the CBC, Canada's national broadcaster, both radio and television and their online services and what have you. Recently, they were uh, complaining to the federal government that, you know, we don't have enough money. We're going to have to cut huge amounts of staff. Uh, The government was upset at that, called them to the table to explain the situation, and then the unfathomable happened, it seems. And that's what this story is all about. The headline, 
Federal budget boosts funding for CBC and Radio Canada, and executives say significant job cuts are no longer needed. This comes actually from CBC News itself. The federal government is upping its funding for the CBC and Radio Canada, easing the financial strain on the public broadcaster and the need for major job cuts and programming reductions this year. In the 2024-2025 federal budget released on Tuesday, an additional $42 million has been allotted for news and entertainment programming, which CBC and Radio Canada President and CEO Catherine Tate said is, quote, welcome news. She goes on to say this investment, together with the steps we have taken since December, means we will be able to stabilize our operations, preserve jobs, and continue to invest in programs and services, Tate said in its statement. Last fall, CBC Radio Canada forecast $125 million in financial pressures for the 2024-2025 fiscal year, announcing plans to slash $40 million from its production budget and cut approximately 800 jobs, 10% reduction in their workforce, including 250 each from CBC and Radio Canada. Prior to Tuesday's budget announcement, CBC and Radio Canada had already laid off 141 employees and cut 205 vacant positions. Although CBC Radio Canada said in its statement that the one-year budget boost will help the corporation, addressing its remaining forecast shortfall and balancing its budget without significant additional reduction this year. Spokesperson Leon Marr did not confirm if the increase would eliminate the risk of layoffs entirely. It's unclear at this time if the budget increase means that CBC and Radio Canada management will receive annual bonuses, performance-based incentive pay that is a part of compensation agreements for some 1,100 employees. Mar said any decisions about performance pay are made in June after the end of the fiscal year. The bonuses were a point of contention for parliamentarians who grilled Tate before a House of Commons Heritage Committee in January following the announcement of the planned job cuts. Tate told the committee the bonus payouts in 2022 and 2023 was $14.9 million. I can understand people's concerns, Tate told the committee. It's an extremely small number, and we need to keep our talented managers. It's not just journalists, although we absolutely honor and support their work. She said the performance pay was a relatively small amount compared to the approximately $900 million it pays out every year in salaries for all employees. Documents the Treasury Board of Canada released on February 29th showed CBC would get an estimated $1.38 billion budget in 2024-2025, up from an estimated $1.29 billion for 2023-2024. Government funding accounts for approximately 70% of CBC and Radio Canada's budget, uh, while the remainder of the funding comes from self-generated revenues, including advertising. According to its annual reports, CBC Radio Canada received $1.24 billion in federal funds in 2022 and $1.39 billion in 2021. Tate, whose term at the helm of the Crown Corporation comes to an end at the start of the next year, told the Heritage Committee CBC and Radio Canada is chronically underfunded at $33 per Canadian. That's a dime a day. CBC and Radio Canada is one of the worst funded public broadcasters in the world, with four times less funding than the UK and France, and eight times less than Germany. Until that situation changes, we must continue to manage with what we have and do our very best to stretch limited resources to meet our mandate. The increase in funding in 2024-25 budget comes as the government aims to redefine the role of the public broadcaster, something Heritage Minister Pascal Saint-Ange said late last year she would like to see completed before the next federal election. It's difficult to have in the same um, article that there's financial strain in a budget of $1.39 billion. But, you know, if it's so difficult, 
I don't know. Bonuses are the first place you might want to cut a little bit. <laughs> Wouldn't that mean that they weren't operating very efficiently? Yet all those people are going to get those bonuses for, for quote unquote, a job well done. <laughs> Uh -huh. well, this has got to be discouraging to to Canadians across the country, I would think. You know, there is a, a, a groundswell out there of, a, you know, some political parties, opposition parties, and people in general who are kind of saying, you know, this is an awful lot of money for what we're getting. And maybe, you know, they should be treated like other broadcasters and, you know, perform well and, and you know, work with the money that you have and not come – you know, with begging for, for more handouts. You know, maybe Catherine Tate should be calling CKUA and ask for a few pointers on how do you survive with such a small budget? Yeah, I, I doubt very much that there's internal auditing going on in the, in the national broadcaster, and I think there needs to be uh, to just see where all of that money is being spent. It's, it's, it's just an astronomical amount of money. So what's happening with our son? Well, the sun has woken up this week. There's a lot of sunspots on the surface. There's um, more and more chances of having some solar flares already. Uh, in the past uh, couple of days, there's been some uh, M-class flares and uh, more to come probably. So it will be one of those times where it's a little bit of an up and down uh, propagation-wise because of these flares and possible um, geomagnetic storms that could arise from those. The sunspot number is 247, and the solar flux 227. When we think that about a week ago, it was barely 115. It's kind of almost double, so propagation is uh, quite interesting. Do turn on a radio and check out the conditions. It could be very interesting. Okay, this is John Fisher of North Chelmsford, Massachusetts. I listen to the International Radio Port every Sunday morning at 10.30 on CKUT 90.3 FM in the fair city of Montreal. You know, there's only one thing we hear about these days in the media more, or, well, maybe not as much as Taylor Swift, <laughs> but maybe second on the list is AI. And I think we're going to have more and more stories about this in the near future. We have probably our first one, I think, on the show today. So uh, one in five listeners thinks that they hear AI on the air. And this is by T. Carter Ross from Radio World. Around 21% of radio listeners think they've heard AI-generated content on the air. That's just one of the findings in Futuri's new audio consumer's perception of AI report. The report is one of two new audience surveys released by Futuri in partnership with CMG Custom Research. The surveys explore the perceptions, expectations, and realities surrounding the use of AI in media today. Futuri offers AI-based tools for media companies and content creators. The surveys found that audiences expect media companies will use AI. Many believe they are already hearing it on the air. They also believe AI can improve program content and are ready for AI-generated voice content. But they want to be informed when and how AI is being used. In the audio consumer survey, 90% of respondents claimed familiarity with AI, including 56% saying they had used AI tools. In general, those familiar with AI had a positive view of the technologies. However, non-users were more wary of AI. The familiarity with AI was similar for respondents to the news survey. When thinking of the use of AI-generated voices, about a third, 31%, said AI voices were more likely to make them listen. For a similar number of respondents, the use of AI voices have no effect on listening. However, 28% of respondents said it would make them less likely to listen. The willingness to hear AI-generated voices was greater for listeners to talk programming and podcasts than to who listen to music radio. Respondents said they'd be more open to AI voices when there wasn't currently an on-air personality, when a host was on vacation, or when the voice had not been heard before. The study also tested listeners' ability to detect the use of AI voices. About 60% of the time, an AI voice 
was perceived as human or vice versa. Nearly half of respondents for the news survey reported they thought they had heard AI-generated news stories read by human presenters on the air. 45% of respondents felt AI could help news outlets improve their story selection, and 54% thought it could improve weather forecasts. Futuri identified repurposing on-air content as podcasts as a potential growth area for broadcasters. The audio consumer survey was fielded in December 2023 and had 2,634 respondents. The news consumer survey was fielded on March 2024 and included 2,500 respondents. Well, AI is arriving, that's for sure. It will be in radio, that's for sure. It will be in content creation also. Uh, Yes, we will have stories created by AI, generated by AI. That, there's no doubt, and I think the key here, and the survey does say it, we need to know when it is AI. You know, like me on YouTube right now when I do content, they've added now a choice where I have to say, um, is this generated by AI in any way or not? Because it will display something on the screen to say, might contain AI content. And I think in radio, it's going going to have to be like that. We need to know when a voice is AI generated. We need to know when news or anything in the content is AI generated uh, because it's going to be so difficult and it's already very difficult to make a difference that we will have to be told when it is AI. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I'm not real comfortable with this yet. Um, I guess, like you say, we need to know when it is AI that we're hearing so that we can evaluate it and compare it against you know what we're used to if we start getting hybrids of you know they're mixing it back and forth then we need to know that as well i think and who will be verifying and who will be checking the ai generated uh, material Mm. Uh, that's a whole other process it even it it's almost like they're hoping to cut back on real people using ai but it may take more people to actually verify what's being ai generated and or will they bother yeah yeah that's you know lots and lots of questions uh i think we'll be having many many more surveys and many more stories about ai as we move forward now we have something special coming up april the 27th is international marconi day this is uh something that's been run by the cornish amateur radio club in the uk International Marconi Day celebrates the huge part that Marconi played in the invention of radio. It is a 24-hour amateur radio event that is held annually to celebrate the birth of Marconi on the 25th of April, 1874. The event is usually held on the Saturday closest to Marconi's birthday, and in 2024, it will be April the 27th. The purpose of the day is for amateur radio enthusiasts from around the world to make contact with historic Marconi sites using communication techniques similar to those used by Marconi himself. There are over 60 official international uh, Marconi Day stations registered that will be on the air on April 27th, scattered around the world. Stations will be added to the list on the web page as they register. You can check the page regularly for updates. Stations are already registered from Italy, Great Britain, Ireland, the US, Austria, Canada, the Netherlands, Australia, the Falkland Islands, Germany, Uruguay, and Spain. The special call signs appear on the web page. For stations to be registered as an official station, they must operate from a site which has a connection with Marconi himself, not a business, etc., created after his work. They must be somewhere that Marconi has personally operated from lived or set up experimental stations so some pretty strict guidelines on which and where certain stations uh, can operate as in previous years the event will run for a full 24 hours with contacts made on any band counting towards an award on all modes of radio communications are accepted towards the award and are actively encouraged please note that internet modes such as Echolink, DMR, and other digital voice modes 
will not count towards the awards for IMD. The certificates are uh, of a very high quality and are well worth obtaining to display on the wall of any shack. They are based on an original Marconi stock certificate circa 1901. There are now only two categories, transmitting amateurs to establish direct two-way communication with 15 different official award stations. Mixed modes are permitted in the log, mixed modes such as CW, voice, and data. And for short wave listeners to log two-way communications made by 15 different official award stations, uh, mixed modes are permitted. And again, the same mode, CW, voice, and data. The Cornish Amateur Radio Club offers two special award certificates for working authorized International Marconi Day award stations, the one for transmitting and the other for shortwave listeners. So this is something that any uh, radio enthusiast, whether you're a ham licensed operator or not, can participate in. So uh, you should check out the website. It's uh, from the the Cornish uh, Amateur Radio Club, which is uh, Gulf X-Ray 4, Charlie Romeo Charlie. So gx4crc.com slash IMD for International Marconi Day. So we'll put up that link for you and uh, you can check all the details out on the website. And the last time I checked, it was at 60, a little over 60 stations. There'll probably be more registered uh, before the event actually happens on the 27th. Now I know what I'm going to do on April 27th. <laughs> yep. Book your day and, uh, you know, take your radio out to lunch and celebrate the uh, the special day. But uh, use your radio for sure and tune yep. around and uh, probably be some interesting communications going on. And uh you can take a look at the certificates. They're quite nice. Uh, you may want to add those to your collection if you're lucky enough to uh, to meet the requirements. So we have upcoming ham radio contests. In addition to Marconi Day, we have some things coming up on the weekend, uh, next weekend, f- starting off with the Florida Cuso Party. Uh, that is sponsored by the Florida Contest Group. And it runs April 27th, uh, 1600 to April 28th, 0200. And then again, April the 28th from 1200 Zulu to 2200 Zulu. The modes are phone, CW, or mix of the two, phone and CW. It's running 40 through 10 meters only, no 160, no 80 meter band, and no work bands. There's the 1010 International Spring Contest Digital. 001 Zulu, April 27th to 2359 Zulu, April 28th. And of course, the band is 10 meters and all digital modes. The Helvetia contest, 1300 Zulu, April 27th to 1259 Zulu, April 28th. That is organized by the Union of Swiss Shortwave Amateurs. 160 through 10 meters, CW, SSB, and digital modes. There's the SBDX RTTY contest, 1200 Zulu, April 27th to 1200 Zulu, April 28th, organized by the Polish Radio Videography Club and the band 3.5 to 28 megahertz without the work bands, and it's RTTY. So lots of contests coming up for you, and don't forget the International Marconi Day on April the 27th. That's going to do it for us today. We thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to get in touch with us here at the show, our email address is radioreport at yahoo.com. Our program is live streamed and archived at ckut.ca. Our Facebook group, International Radio Report, we'd love for you to join the group. Uh, Look for International Radio Report on Facebook and click the join icon and uh, participate with all of our other members on the group. Our YouTube channel is uh, found at IRR on YouTube, and you can subscribe to receive uh, notices of the new postings. Each new show is posted there each week and just after it airs, and you can go back and listen to previous shows as well. And finally, we have an X account, and you find us there at IRRCKUT, and we invite you to follow us there. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll talk to you again next Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, 14.30 UTC on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Have a great week, everyone. Bye-bye for now.